All right. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the different kind of edit modes that you can use in the editor view. And the edit modes are for editing different types of item. And in Rube, um, the different types of item are bodies, fixtures, joints, vertices, and images. And we can see a bunch of buttons up here uh, that we can use to switch between these um, types of item that we want to edit. And we can also just use the shortcut keys here. So we have B for bodies, F, uh, it's just the first letter of each of those words, bodies, fixtures, joints, vertices, and images. And we can just hit the key there to change between those modes. <coughs> so I'll just go through each of the edit modes for each type of item and um, just sort of point out a few of the differences and it's quite useful to be, to be able to tell them apart quickly so you can tell which which mode you're editing without actually having to look up here all the time. Uh, so in body mode uh, we can edit the bodies obviously and one way you can tell that quite easily is you can see these little gray circular fading circles here to, to mark the origin position for each body. So there's one here, one there, one there, and so on. So if you see these, you know you're in body mode. And <coughs> um, also in this video, I'll go over um, a little bit about selection, how you can select these items and select groups of items. So to select things, obviously you just click on it with the left mouse button. If you've used the editor at all, you've probably figured that out by now. And you can also drag and select with the left mouse button over a group of items like this. So I can select everything in the scene like that. Or I can use Control A to select everything in the scene. Um, and you can also use the Shift and Control keys in a similar way to a lot of other programs. For example, if I have one body selected there and I want to add something else to that selection, I can hold the Shift key down while selecting something else and keep going like that to add more things and I can also use the control key to toggle the selection so if I decide I actually this one here I don't want to have that in the selection I can use the control key to turn it off and on like that so this is uh, you've probably seen this before in other editors and uh, I think the Windows File Explorer is like this as well so uh, bodies are selected by selecting this circular marker there. So you can see as you drag the um, this rectangle area across there, you can see the ones that highlight are the ones that will be selected when you release the mouse button, like that. OK, so that's bodies. Uh, next one is fixtures. In fixture mode, there's not really anything particular that you can see to differentiate that you're in fixture mode until you mouse over something, and then you'll see uh, that the fixtures show up in purple rather than yellow like they were in body, body edit mode. So in this mode, we can select fixtures like this. Um, this body at the bottom here, if we go back into bodies mode for a second, this is just one body, and when I mouse over this body, we can see the dashed lines to each fixture that it owns. And when we're in fixture mode, mousing over each individual fixture will show a dashed line to the body that this belongs to. So we can uh, select a bunch of fixtures in the same way by, oops, um, by using the drag to select. And once again, as you're dragging, they'll be highlighted if they are going to be part of the selection. And of course, same same way we can use uh, the control and the shift keys to augment this selection that we currently have. Um, so let's fixtures. Joints. We have a few joints in this scene. Uh, hit the J key to, to move into joints mode. Joints have a joint nub in the same way that the bodies have the little grey circle because there's, no, there's nothing actually visible to see about joints. So they have these little markers here drawn like that. 
and the different types of joints have different markers. We have a wheel joint there and we have distance joints and revolute, revolute joints here. And I'll go into the details of um, what these markers uh, have to differentiate them. Like in this one here, the revolute joint has some limits there. We can see those little uh, spindly sticks hanging off the side of it there show us where the limits are. Um, so that'll be the subject of a, another video in the future. But for now, uh, obviously, we can see that we mouse over and we can mouse over the anchor points of the joints to include them in the selection like this. And we can select a bunch of them and use the control key and so on, just the same as for everything else. Um, one other thing that joints have that's a little bit different is that there's actually two points to them. So a body has one point, a fixture has an area. Joints actually have two separate locations that uh, they use to bring things together. And when we mouse over a joint, we can see, let's try this one here, let's zoom out a little bit. If I mouse over this revolute joint, we can see a green dashed line going to the body A position and a blue, bluish purple line dashed line going up to the body B position here, going upwards. So that's just a visual indicator to let you quickly see which body is which and which bodies this joint is connected to. Um, okay, that's joints. Uh, vertices, next. If you're in vertex mode, this is pretty easy to tell by the fact that you can see little gray dots for the vertices. And of course, you guessed it, you can drag and select like this and control and shift and all that stuff. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to figure out, I think. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, images. I. Uh, there's three images in this scene. We have one for the car body, and one each for the wheels here. So they are quite similar to fixtures in that they are an area, and as soon as the mouse is in that area, you can select them, and you can also drag and select multiple, everything um, works the same as for the other item types. <coughs> and also uh, you can see an orange dashed line between the center of the image and the body that this image is attached to if it is attached to a body. Okay, the last edit mode uh, is worlds. This doesn't have a shortcut key because um, I'm reserving the W for something else perhaps later on and it's not such a common thing to be changing anyway. But in the worlds edit mode this is quite obvious because there's this huge arrow in the middle of the screen like that and the uh, screen is kind of faded out as well. But this allows us to set the gravity like that <coughs> which we'll, we'll cover a little bit later. And um, Okay, just moving back to images for a second, one thing that I forgot to mention was that uh, sometimes it can be a little bit awkward or a little bit hard to pick the image that you want to pick because images are often overlapping, especially if there's large areas like this where there's just empty uh, zero alpha areas of the image. So we have the, the wheels are actually overlapping the um, car body image at the back. So the way it works is the image center that is closest to the mouse will be the one that's highlighted that you, that you can select. Uh, so just to make that a little bit clearer I'll move these over here and I'll oops, overlap them like this so that we can see that <coughs> when the mouse is only over one of them obviously that's the one that's going to be highlighted. When it's over two of them it becomes the one that has the closest center to the mouse, which is here in this case, and as I move towards the other one, um, this center is closest. So at about this point here in the middle, we switch over between one of them being closer than the other. And the same goes for fixtures as well. So for fixtures, um, 
we could do something like let's take this fixture here because this is a good good example of a um, long skinny fixture which might help me illustrate this and we'll make it a bit bigger so at this point here we have two fixtures overlapping and neither of them are selected now and we can see when we mouse over this one this one highlights and right now the mouse is over both of them but it doesn't change because we haven't got to the point where now this fixture center is closer to the mouse so hopefully <laughs> this makes sense um, it doesn't seem all that necessary to know this for this case that we're looking at here but when you get a lot of fixtures overlapping uh, especially long skinny ones like this where you have uh, quite a large area of the fixture and say for example I'm trying to mouse over this long skinny fixture and select it here but I keep selecting the the larger one there and I'm like what the hell is going on so just sort of keep in mind that uh, you need to have the mouse cursor closer to the center of the fixture that you're trying to select like that okay so um, one other thing I want to look at in this video is this cursor thingy here and this little red and white circle is what we call a cursor if you ever use blender you know exactly what that is and we can move that around by hitting the C key so hit C for cursor and then we can see that the um, the there's a, like a ghost cursor following the, the the mouse cursor at the moment and then I can just click somewhere to set this location and the location of the cursor is used for all kinds of things most commonly when you add a new item into the scene it will be added at the location of the cursor in most cases and you can also use the, the cursor to help align things and um, set up set up um, situations where you want to match two locations and you can also access the location of the cursor and script as well so it's handy handy for all kinds of things so yeah C and then left click to move the cursor somewhere like this you can undo that as well of course and you can also uh, yes another thing we should look at in this video is this thing that we call the center of the selection so let's say I have two fixtures selected. I'll select this fixture and I'll select that fixture. And we have this white cross in the middle and that's called the selection center. And this is used for um, a few things. One of them is when we rotate, we can choose to rotate around the selection center or oops, or we can rotate around the cursor. So this is rotating around the cursor and this is rotating around the selection center and you can see the little um, what are they buttons <laughs> in the toolbar changing as well so we'll cover the rotation a little bit more in another video but just for now this little white cross is what we call the selection center so getting back to the cursor and how we can move the cursor so C left click moves like that and then we can use C and then hit S to move to the selection. So what that does is it moves the cursor to this um, little white cross. So that can be quite handy to put the cursor somewhere. For example, if I go to vertex mode and I select these two vertices, the selection center becomes in the middle of them. So it's the, the average point of all of the things that you've selected. And then if I hit C S, this cursor will go to that central point there. Likewise I can put the cursor in between these two points or at the center of all of these four points and so on. So this is probably something that you'll that you'll find yourself using fairly regularly and if once again if you've used Blender you'll already know about that. And finally um, we can select uh, we can set the location of the cursor directly and if we just want to check what a point is we can also do that fairly easily by using CC so this is a shortcut key for setting the cursor position directly so let's say I, I move my cursor to um, I don't know, just the topless aerial point there and I hit C 
C and that will come up with the location, the current location of the cursor in there um, already. And let's say I wanted to change the height of it. I don't, I don't want to change the the horizontal position. I just want to change it to vertical height to be uh, say three, and then hit enter. So that'll move the cursor up vertically. So that's C, C. Uh, this can also be handy if you want to, for example, let's say I have this vertex here, I have the cursor here, and actually a better example is this. Okay, we'll select all of these, uh, cursor to selection, so the cursor is now in the center of these, and let's say we want to move this vertex to that point. We can select this vertex, do C, C, that will show us the cursor position. We do Control C to copy that, and then over here we have the um, local position and the world position of this vertex. So we can just select that, paste it, in, paste it in there. Oops, sorry, it should be the world position. Paste that location in, and then we have the vertex moved to where the cursor was. So these can be handy little things to know um, as you get used to the using the program. Okay, so that's it for this video. See you next time. Oops, actually uh, there was another thing that I wanted to mention here and that is the fact that each of these edit modes that we've looked at has its own selection state. So for example if I hit B, oops, B uh, to change into bodies mode I can select those bodies there and then in fixtures mode we still have these two fixtures selected that we selected before so I can switch back and forwards between edit modes and I have a, a separate selection for each edit mode so just to make that clearer we can make some more views and tile them like this so I'll have bodies, fixtures, joints joints and vertices so we can have a sele separate selection for each one of these okay now we're finished